walk through cough droplets that are still vaulting through the air, either on a crowded street or on a beach, Florida. Hi everyone, I'm Mark Kine, founder of Disaster Doc. We help people all over the world to better understand disasters so they can protect themselves and others. So today I'd like to help you better understand the COVID-19 pandemic and to share with you a few tips for staying well during social distancing and why this is so critical and important for all of us. The first step to protecting ourselves is understanding how COVID infection occurs. This virus needs to float in a warm bath. This warm bath is actually body fluid and it needs this in order to survive. So it's more likely to travel to you as in the form of a droplet. So people are said to be exposed when they come in contact with the droplet. So where do these droplets come from? They come from inside infected people's lungs. People come in contact with these droplets either by direct exposure or indirect exposure. But how do we stop the pandemic? We need to stop people from touching and breathing these droplets. Tip number one, stay the F home. Like the science shows, avoiding exposures is the single most effective way to avoid infections that end this pandemic. Even if you have no consideration for your own health or that of others, the longer that you decide to socialize in public, the longer every one of us will have to shelter in place and wait for this pandemic to end. And if you do need to go out, avoid exposing yourself. Some of us can't stay home, right? Some of us have to work in public and some of us even work directly with the public. So what can we do to protect ourselves and to protect our loved ones at home who are depending upon us to not bring home this infection? We avoid those direct and indirect exposures that I mentioned earlier. For a moment, I want you to close your eyes and picture this six foot bubble around your body. Your skin is clean, your breath, even your cough is virus free. Our bubbles change shape as we walk through the air, extending behind us a little bit as we move in the air. And when our bubbles cross each other, we share the same air and the same droplets. So when we share our six foot bubble with someone else, droplets from their cough are more likely to reach our lungs unless we try to block it in some way. Think of the world as being made up of three zones. The hot zone, the warm zone, and the cold zone. The cold zone is your home where everyone is healthy and virus free. It's less work to keep your bubble clean and virus free when you're in your cold zone. You don't have to worry so much about touching your family or your face as long as everyone stays healthy. The warm zone is the world outside your door. The warm zone consists of those places outside your home where it becomes more likely that others may step inside or perhaps even cough into your six foot bubble. This could be your workplace, it could be standing in line at the grocery store, it could be inside of an elevator. These are the places where we should protect our bubble. These are the places we should also be respecting and staying out of other people's bubbles. So finally, there's the hot zone. The hot zone are environments that by their very nature cause people to come in contact with each other to share bubbles or to even touch. These can occur at the cash register, they can occur during a cough in the subway or the elevator or a bus or a taxi. They can also occur when we inadvertently walk through cough droplets that are still vaulting through the air, either on a crowded street or on a beach. Florida. In these high-risk zones, you should protect your skin, you should protect your mouth, your eyes, and your nose with the best barrier that you can find. When I return home, I immediately disinfect these things that I used in the hot zone, also including my credit card and my cell phone. And now I'm back in my clean little bubble in my cold zone. So mistake number one, people are still shaking hands. Two weeks ago, I attended a business meeting, a public health meeting where people were still shaking hands and hugging. Touching elbows in some sort of odd elbow wing dance simply increases your likelihood not only looking like an idiot, but also being a spreader. Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't we supposed to be sneezing into these same elbows that we're now sharing and touching each other? That doesn't make sense with me. How about this? Smile, wink, nod, touch your heart, don't touch each other. Mistake number two, people aren't careful when handling contaminated things like sunglasses and face masks and cards and phones and cigarettes and vapes. I also encourage you to avoid eating when you're in the hot zone. Those things can come directly into your mouth that way. So mistake number three, people aren't using masks. I know that the Surgeon General said that face masks are not necessary for the general public. I'm not saying go out and purchase a mask in the current market, and please don't. 
I'd recommend any type of facial covering to protect your eyes and mouth and nose. Even a handkerchief over your mouth is better than receiving that full viral load of a cough directly in your face. Dr. Julie Gerberding, the former director of CDC, has said that even a t-shirt over your mouth and nose would be better than nothing. Now mistake number four. People of privilege are being insensitive to a minority. In today's world of pandemic, the people of privilege are those that have their youth to protect them. How can we justify behavior that hurts the most vulnerable? We can't. We are in a crisis, and if you can reach out, you can literally save the lives of vulnerable populations by protecting them and preventing them from ever contracting this illness. And finally, I just want to say it's been a long, scary road to get here. And we're not home yet. But I can tell you that our homes will return to normal. This pandemic will end. And when it does, we will all have a deeper understanding of ourselves and others. We will have joined together across parties and across borders to fight a common threat. We will have learned the stories of the heroes from the streets of Wuhan, as well as heard the songs of resilience sing from the rooftops of Assisi, joined together in a common bond of human spirit. Be well.